So, uh, good morning, friends. Um, my name is Francis, and I'll be talking on pen testing NoSQL databases uh, with NoSQL exploitation framework. Okay, so uh, who am I? I'm an independent security researcher, so of course I'm jobless. Um, I'm a member of Open Security. Uh, it's a community for like-minded people uh, where we put up uh, tutorials and other stuff online. You could go on to opensecurity.in to, uh, to uh, grab a view of the site. Uh, we also organize uh, yearly conferences in India. Uh, so it's a community where anyone can join. Um, so I'm currently pursuing my bachelor's degree. It's in back in India. So I've spoken at a, a couple of conferences. Uh, OK. So these are uh, some of the conferences I've been to. Uh, Hack in the Box, uh, Cocoon, Nalcon, etc. OK, so uh, let's get into the agenda of the talk. Uh, so what will, uh, what will I be more concentrating on? Uh, I'll be concentrating on uh, server client and server management consoles. Uh, I'll be giving more importance to uh, pen testing scenarios. Uh, we, I will not deal with any memory related bugs or issues. And of course, I'll be, uh, we'll be looking onto a uh, NoSQL exploitation framework uh, and we'll have plenty of demos. So uh, how many of you have heard of NoSQL databases? Okay, so that's good. So uh, let's have, a, uh, for those who are not uh, aware of NoSQL databases, it's uh, much more, it's uh, the main difference between SQL and uh, NoSQL databases is that uh, uh, in SQL you have structured data and NoSQL you, do, you don't have any structured data. So some of the key features of uh, NoSQL databases are schemaless, uh, they have support, uh, it's open source. Uh, it runs well on, uh, well on clusters. Um, it's, it was built for the modern web. Uh, it does not use a, a relational model, and it follows the main four principles as that is uh, atomicity, consistency, uh, isolation, and durability. So what are the main four types of NoSQL databases? Uh, uh, there are white column store databases. HBase and Cassandra are examples of those. Uh, you have document store databases, uh, MongoDB and CouchDB come under those. You have key value or tuple store databases, RIAC, Redis are examples of those. And you have graph databases, uh, that's Neo4j and Dex. So these are some of the uh, famous databases I've taken upon. Uh, so we'll have a look of, on all those databases. So why uh, NoSQL security? So uh, it's an important topic to uh, deal with. So. Uh, why, why does the developer need to worry? So in the next slide, so you can see that uh, this, is a, uh, this is a snapshot I've taken from the Shodan. So I hope that everyone is familiar with Shodan. So uh, you, as you could see that uh, there are at least uh, 84,000 results for MongoDB. Uh, for Couch, you have at least 1,500 results. And for Redis, you could see that uh, it's 37,000. So, the main point to note is that at least 95% of the NoSQL databases, or Mongo, Couch, Redis, uh, that have taken the screenshots are vulnerable and they are open and their data could be easily be accessed. So some of the hosting companies like Rackspace, uh, Amazon, uh, are vulnerable to uh, attacks also. So the, these are some of the open databases and none of them had authentication. So uh, what are the main key points uh, regarding the NoSQL? databases. So they are low on security. Uh, you could see, uh, if you read the documentation, you could see that uh, it emphasizes on a trusted environment. Uh, we, there are the, they have weak authentication mechanisms. Uh, man in the middle attacks are very much popular there. Uh, they are open source and hence their APIs are widely exposed. Uh, and their AP for, API for PHP is easy to abuse. Okay, so uh, let's get hold on each of the databases. So Mongo, MongoDB. Uh, we'll have a general feature layout for MongoDB. Uh, it is written in C++. Uh, it retains the friendly properties of the SQL. It's pro it uses the BSON protocol. Um, you have the Mongo as the server and the Mongo client. It runs on port uh, 27017 by default, and the web interface runs on uh, 27017 plus 1000. That's uh, 28017. Okay, so uh, it uses the MongoDB wire protocol, uh, and that is represented in the JSON format. So let's have a look at the uh, Mongo architecture. This is, uh, the architecture is a sort of uh, simple Mongo server and client. 
So uh, where does the uh, attacker kick in? So uh, the main attacks possible are, are sniffing information, JavaScript injection, and uh, denial of service attacks. So let's have a uh, look at all of these attacks. So the uh, JavaScript attack surface. Uh, JavaScript attacks are used mo mostly against MongoDB. The reason is that uh, MongoDB uses the JavaScript engine. Uh, it uses it used the uh, SpiderMonkey JavaScript engine for versions 2.4 and below. And for versions 2.4 and above, it, it was using the uh, uh, for it is using the uh, Google's V8 JavaScript engine. So uh, this is one of the major uh, changes that Mongo has uh, evolved. So vulnerabilities keep popping up uh, in uh, MongoDB. Uh, the command ex uh, there was a recent vulnerability for uh, command execution uh, in MongoDB for versions 2.2 and above, below. Uh, there are possible chances to overwrite Mongo-defined shell functions, uh, and there are lots of resource attack uh, exertion attacks also possible. Uh, since the, the power of JavaScript could be used within the Mongo shell, there are there is a huge possibility for attack vectors. Okay, so uh, this is a key point over here, uh, mapping uh, SQL commands to MongoDB. So uh, the AND is mapped to ampersand uh, or to pipe and equal to double equal to in uh, JavaScript or in Mongo. So why I'm showing is that uh, as I, soon as I display the demo, you could see that I'll be using some of these uh, rather than the AND. So injecting JavaScript. So reference to database, uh, object in Mongo. So uh, the key point to be noted here is that uh, uh, Mongo refers to da uh, database object and its main functions. And uh, if an attacker finds an injection point, what he could do is that uh, he could uh, he could take the database object and call further functions like collections or any other fun functions possible within the Mongo shell. So uh, what? Uh, so this was a problem uh, within uh, applications developed uh, by by the developers. So if an attacker finds an injection point, what he could do is that he could uh, call, he could take the database object and uh, access the functions uh, within uh, within the API. So it was found and it was patched uh, uh, for versions 2.2 and above. So uh, so what happened? So does the JavaScript injection end here? So uh, this is where uh, the, again, JavaScript techniques come up, uh, this point of reference. So uh, if those who are familiar with JavaScript, it is, uh, it is uh, the, uh, many of have uh, used the, this pointer. So what happens is that it returns the current object. So uh, as soon as you have an injection point and if you, and if you tell the uh, JavaScript to return uh, the, this pointer, uh, it, return, it dumps the whole database. So that is one of the attack where you could use so what happens even if uh, the, this point is blocked? So version uh, version command, uh, the main feature of version uh, in Mongo is that it bounds to uh, all database objects by default. So what happens is that uh, even if the, this pointer is blocked, uh, you, you could reuse the version command to return uh, to return uh, true. So what happens is that if you if you have a uh, command evaluating to true, and if you tell uh, uh, to, and if you specify the version command, so it returns true. So again, you get to dump the data. So this is used where uh, you use the dollarware. Dollarware is used in MongoDB to evaluate JavaScript code. So how do you check for JavaScript injection attacks uh, in uh, MongoDB? So you have an application. Uh, you could check for JavaScript uh, functions because since there are some of the uh, some of predefined functions within the Mongo shell. You could use suppose uh, sleep uh, five hundred means would sleep for five seconds and would render app and the application would render the response by uh, five seconds delayed. So what happens? You could check for uh, so you could check for uh, JavaScript injection attacks. Uh, there is uh, the module has been added to uh, the NoSQL exploitation framework, which I've written uh, and text, uh, tests for uh, web applications. So uh, saving JavaScript, uh, this is one of the features we, uh, we could use for post-exploitation phase. So uh, it allows the attacker to uh, write JavaScript functions and save them. Uh, it can be used for further uh, when needed rather than, uh, rather than writing the code again and again. So uh, the, uh, the concept is very simple. You could, uh, you could uh, give the ID, which is the function name, 44 cone. And uh, the value of the function is what, how you define the function. 
So uh, to load the JavaScript function into the Mongo shell, uh, you could use the uh, DB dot load server scripts API to load the uh, uh, JavaScript function within within the shell. So as soon as you call the function, uh, for here it will return express Y. You could, uh, so how is this useful is that, suppose if an attacker writes a, a script uh, to dose the, uh, the Mongo shell, uh, Mongo server, uh, he could, uh, so after he gets into the server, he could just again call this function rather than writing the code again and again. So uh, Mongo with uh, PHP, uh, PHP converts the parameter with brackets to associative arrays. As you could see that uh, uh, the user, where I've, uh, in the demo, you could see that user uh, $GT means dollar greater, and uh, uh, the pass, uh, it converts the brackets to associative arrays. So what happens here is that as soon as you uh, give a parameter within the associative array, uh, it gets converted uh, it gets converted into the uh, associative array. And uh, so here you could see that username, array, dollar and knee, foo. So what happens here is that uh, as soon as you give here the dollar and knee command and you specify the foo user, it checks for any, it checks within the database whether uh, any user named foo exists. Since it's dollar and knee, it checks whether there is, uh, it checks whether uh, foo user does not exist and returns true. So what happens, it uh, retrieves all databases, which uh, all users, which is uh, not foo. So let's have a look at some of the new vectors. Uh, so some of the new vectors are $xs, uh, $type, uh, $all, and you could use the regex, which is within the JavaScript itself. So uh, the $xs matches documents that have the specified field. Uh, the $type variable selects documents uh, if a field is of the uh, specified type. Uh, suppose if it is character, then return all documents after character. Uh, dollar all uh, matches arrays that contains all elements uh, specif specified in the query. So uh, let's have a look at uh, demos. Okay, so uh, this is a dummy application I have written. Uh, so uh, I've uh, outputted the query so that you could see. So uh, how, how do I check for JavaScript injection attacks? And you could see that uh, the application is loading and after uh, five seconds, the application returns. So this is, how, uh, this is a possibility of how you could check for JavaScript attacks. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, this pointer attack I told uh, within the so uh, so it returns since the, this object was bound it returns all the uh, users within the database. So what happens if uh, that this point is blocked? So if here I try to so I have blocked the this operator. So and if I bypass it using the version command. So again, you could see that the application uh, returns and dumps all the databases, database details. So this is the PHP which converts the, uh, converts to associative arrays. It looks for, uh, it looks for any user which is not equal to foo and returns all the details. You could also use $axis, which is another. Okay, so uh, resource exhaustion on uh, MongoDB. Um, uh, MongoDB on 32-bit uh, environments is too easy for attackers. Uh, the use command creates arbitrary uh, databases on the fly. 
attacker could run it continuously exhausting the uh, space as well as memory so this is a simple one liner uh, denial of service attack so he could write uh, a while loop uh, infinite and he could tell it to uh, create databases uh, unlimited so uh, the problem is that uh, an empty database occupies up to one in 192 MB by default on Mongo. So uh, within uh, a few uh, within a few loop execution, uh, the whole resource would be exhausted. So uh, let's move on to uh, CouchDB. Um, uh, some of the key features of uh, CouchDB is that it was written in a line. Uh, it uses the uh, document uh, CouchDB documents uses JSON object. Uh, it's schema free. Uh, it uses the HTTP or REST protocol, uh, and the client uses the REST API to communicate with the backend. Uh, it runs on port uh, 5984 by default, uh, and it has the Futon uh, web interface. So this is the uh, basic arch architecture of uh, the uh, CouchDB. You have the uh, database, you have the uh, JSON objects, data objects, and the client uh, uh, client layer, of which is the Futon interface. So the administrator uh, uh, communicates using the Futon interface, and then you have the uh, backend uh, CouchDB. So uh, what are the attacks possible over here? You have uh, cross-site scripting attacks, you have uh, CSRF attacks, and you, you could sniff for authentic authentication cookies, uh, you could uh, have cross-site port attacks, uh, et cetera. So uh, admin party is, uh, is, some of the, is one of the key features of uh, Futon. So as soon as you install the Couch instance, it by default goes on to admin party state, which means that uh, uh, it is open and it, is it does not have any users by, uh, by default, and it is accessible to all. Uh, the authentication cookie is sniffable. Uh, the credentials are sent over an uh, unencrypted channel. The cross site port attacks uh, in replication feature of the Futon interface is one of the key to be noted, but it is limited to uh, uh, web server ports, uh, accesses, and uh, HTML injection in Futon interface. Accesses is quite uh, not uh, applicable in uh, uh, Couch since it uses the HTTP only cookie. Uh, you have denial of service attacks and you have file enumeration attacks on Couch. So uh, vulnerabilities, you have access in a uh, token interface, uh, you have HTML injection. Uh, the cross-site port attack, like I said, uh, can be used to check. Uh, so the whole point of uh, cross-site port attack is that uh, suppose you have, an, uh, you have uh, an application within the network and you could really, uh, and only a certain IP could access that network. So what you could do is that you could log on to the replication feature of Couch and you could check uh, whether, they are, uh, whether uh, the other network uh, port is open or not. You, uh, you can, the, uh, the main feature of cross-site port attack is that you can't uh, scan directly via the Nmap or any other scanner you use. So uh, this is what uh, I mentioned. So this is one of the key features of vulnerabilities of uh, CouchDB. So the malign enumeration attack also stands. Uh, you, you could do it via the XSPA. So addressing auth cookie, uh, so uh, it, it is default to expire within 10 minutes uh, and attacker gaining access uh, would use, want to use these uh, 10 minutes fruitfully. So, uh, so as soon as suppose an, at uh, an attacker, uh, suppose an administrator is logging into his database uh, and uh, an attacker grabs the cookie, uh, so what he, he would want to do is he would want to use those uh, 10 minutes fruitfully. So you want, we would want to use the authentication cookie and grab the uh, details of the database. So what I've did is that I've added a feature into the NoSQL database is that as soon as you grab the cookie, it automatically dumps the uh, database and details for you. <coughs> so uh, PHP on couch. Uh, PHP, uh, on, uh, uh, PHP on couch is a driver developed uh, for uh, CouchDB. Uh, it uses the curl library to send uh, requests to the API since, it, uh, since Couch uses the HTTP REST API. Unvalidated <coughs> uh, PHP apps could result in arbitrary API call execution. So uh, the problem is that uh, the, uh, uh, the API is written uh, were not secure. Uh, it does not perform any validation. So you could use certain commands uh, within the uh, API calls within the Couch DB2 uh, access certain resources. <clears throat> so uh, this is where the vulnerability lies in uh, PHP on Couch Driver. Uh, 
you could see that uh, uh, it uses the query and test uh, to pass it on to the curl library. And uh, the, uh, you could see that the curl library executes the uh, query. Okay, so I'll show a vulnerable demo. So uh, we check for authentication attacks over here. So as soon as uh, the all docs uh, command in uh, couch states that you could fetch uh, all the documents in couch. So an example would be so uh, this is a uh, this is a sample. Uh, Example of the query I would like to execute over here. So the all docs command, uh, the OpenSec is the database of the couch, and the all docs uh, is the uh, dumps the all the documents of the corresponding database. So what happens here is that since uh, the uh, it was sending uh, it, uh, it was sending a REST HTTP HTTP, you could see here is that. So the uh, wh what I did here was that if, if the query executes and returns true, since all docs returned true, since all, any of the use, uh, all the documents were matching and it returned true, so uh, logically the application logs in. Similarly, the changes could be used. It's, uh, it's another API within the uh, couch DB. So this is one of the challenges we hosted for CTFs uh, in back in India. So it dumps the entire result for you. So you could see that the request being going. And here we specified the changes. That's why we got the output. Okay, so Redis, uh, uh, let's have a look at the Redis architecture. Uh, uh, you can see that uh, as a client, you have the API, Redis API, and you have Redis connected to it. And you could even connect to the PostgreSQL database if you want. So some of the key features of Redis is that uh, you have the key value storage engine. Uh, it, it has a Redis server and client. It is driven by a configuration file. And uh, documentation is actually a, a huge laugh in the park. If you read the documentation of Redis carefully, you'll find a whole lot of vulnerabilities within the Redis database. So uh, Redis supports uh, fight data structures, strings, hashes, list sets, and ordered sets. So uh, uh, let's have a look, uh, look at the attacks. Uh, brute force Redis passwords, denial of service on the fly, command killing, configuration rewrite, arbitrary file rewrite, and blind file elimination, which is useful in pandas. So this is a snapshot of I've taken within the Redis configuration file. So why I'm specifying is that you could see that uh, it actually increases us. Warning, since Redis is pretty fast, an outside user can try up to 150K passwords per second against a good box. This means that you should use a very strong password. Otherwise, it will be very easy to break. So this is pretty much motivation for anyone. So the uh, Redis passes password very fast. So you could, uh, so the my tool, the, the tool also uses, you could use any dictionary and you could crack, crack pretty much long passes within few seconds. So uh, so this, this was one of the uh, main feature that helped many more attacks help getting into Redis. For Redis versions 2.6 and below, uh, there was no support for scripting. For versions 2.6 and above, uh, they add its uh, ability for scripting. Uh, so Redis uses the uh, Lua scripting uh, engine. So since we said scripting, let's have a look. Uh, 
the let's have a look at the Lua scripting engine and basics. Uh, Redis uses the uh, Lua to script uh, and manage scripts. Uh, the engine is properly scanned, boxed, and offers enough security. Global vari variables, they have uh, implemented global variables protection, but it can be also bypassed. Scripts are executed using the eval, so uh, that's pretty much uh, uh, all about the Lua. It's available from versions 2.6 and above. So uh, it has, the problem is that uh, Redis limited the scripting library, so it uh, enabled only a certain set of uh, libraries for use uh, for the user. So these are some of the libraries available. So uh, the key points, uh, eval and evalsh are the two uh, Redis API, which is used to evaluate scripts uh, in using the Lua interpreter built into Redis. The script kill and uh, list and access are uh, some of the uh, APIs within the Redis, which is used to check whether the uh, script exists. Uh, uh, the script access is used to check whether a script exists or not, uh, lists, uh, lists the, uh, whether any script is running or not, and script kill, uh, kill, kills the current script running. So an important point to note is that uh, when a script is running, no other functions can be accessed or any operations can be performed. So this is a key feature to note that uh, it is a kind of denial of service. So, as soon, so if you run a, a, a script within the uh, Redis platform, uh, no other user will, uh, will be able to access the database or extract resources from it. So uh, since scripting was evolved, this is a one line denial of service attack. So as soon as you run uh, the script, uh, the Redis server crashes since it keeps on evaluating it and uh, returns for, and, and the server crashes. So this is a one line denial of service attack possible in Redis. So commands can be uh, disabled by, attack, uh, by an attacker. So as soon as an attacker logs into the Redis uh, server, he could use the rename command, uh, and he could uh, rename the main configuration command, which is used to list the configuration in Redis. He could rename it to some other uh, way, a name he wants. Uh, he could also even permanently disable the command by renaming it to nothing. So there are two possibilities available, possibilities available here. So file rewrite, uh, so this is one of the feature, uh, suppose you can, uh, you need to access the uh, database dump of the, uh, of certain databases. So what you could do is that uh, you could rewrite the configuration file to somewhere where you want. So where we have access to, suppose uh, the www folder where, we, uh, where, uh, where we, we could access, access it. So what an attacker could do is that he could write the configuration file to uh, www, so where he could, access it remotely. Uh, so file name enumeration, uh, this is just possible when we are testing in restricted environments. Uh, the do file uh, can be used in Lua scripting, which is used to open files. Uh, although it doesn't, although it doesn't open the file, it gives the, an indication whether the file exists or not. So if I try evaluating uh, war w, it, it show, it's, uh, it puts the output that diary exists, but, Cannot open file, so and if I uh, if I do www, uh, it says that no such diary exists. So you could do a blind file enumeration attack. So this module also has been added to the framework. So let's have a look at the demo. So this is the one line denial of service attack. As you could see, the Redis server has jumped in CPU usage. So actually it crashes after a while. I have written a script to restart it so it won't crash. Okay, so uh, let's have a look uh, for the blind file enumeration. Uh, I, 
I specify a file which doesn't exist. So it says no such file access, uh, directory access or not. As soon as I specify a valid file, it's, it, it spits out another error, which means that it, it is not able to pass the file. So here you could see that uh, the configuration file currently I have written it to, by default it runs, uh, it, uh, it writes uh, writes into var uh, lib slash redis. You could specify it to. You could set it to configure set directory var www. So uh, arbitrary rewrite of is possible. So Cassandra, uh, uh, key takeaways, uh, it is written in Java. Uh, the main point is uh, you could store huge, uh, huge data sets. It's almost similar to SQL. So it uses the SQL3 and TRIF protocol. Uh, uh, the SQL3 is very much uh, similar to SQL, but you have some limitations that come from scalability, like you have no joins, no aggregate functions, etc. <coughs> By default, uh, Cassandra runs on port 9160. So some of the uh, sad facts for attackers is that you have no or, uh, no union, uh, no sub request, uh, terms must be indexed, and primary key can only be queried for. So these are some of the restraints that are applicable to Cassandra. So uh, wh what is the security issues? Uh, so let's have a look at the uh, Cassandra model. You have the key space, which is the database, and you have the column family, which is the data table, and uh, you have the data. Uh, so uh, similar to SQL injection, you have SQL injection possible on Cassandra web apps. Uh, shell commands can be useful to an attacker. So suppose uh, you have, uh, suppose you get into a machine and you have Cassandra running, you could use the source command to read files within the, uh, within the, and, it is run, if, and if it is running as root, then you could read pretty much all the files. Uh, blind file enumeration attack is also possible. Uh, I've added and module to the framework. So I don't have an, a demo for the uh, PHP application, but I have the source command. You could see. So uh, although it does not display the, you could see that it displays the entire EDC password for you. So it's useful while during pen test. So HBase, uh, HBase is also written in Java. Uh, the main point is we have billions of rows, X millions uh, of columns. Uh, it's written, it also uses the HTTP or REST uh, protocol. Uh, it runs on port, of, uh, port 6379 or 80, uh, this is a REST API by default. It also gives embassies to uh, restrict trusted environments. So some of the security issues is that uh, you have no security by default. You have man in the middle attacks and the REST API is very much exposed. Okay, so uh, the NoSQL database research on security doesn't end uh, anywhere. Uh, you have uh, Neo4j, Memcache, React, also under the scanners. Uh, some uh, vulnerabilities has been discussed. Uh, support for uh, the Memcache, uh, Neo4j, and React are soon to be added to the framework. Uh, memory leaks and overflows are on the rise. Uh, those who are interested, you could have a, there's an interesting blog written for Neo4j uh, recently. So you could take it down the link if anyone wants. So, uh, so the whole problem lies, is there automation? Like suppose you have a SQL map for uh, SQL injection and SQL and, uh, checks. Do you have a framework for uh, no SQL? So uh, this is where the need for a framework came. Uh, there was a, already a framework for called no SQL map, but the problem was that it, it came, it gave emphasis to Limongo. So, uh, I wrote a framework where you could, uh, you have access to all the databases like Couch, Redis, uh, HBase, and Cassandra. So uh, the framework is one of its kind. Uh, it's open source and written in Python. 
uh, there are plenty of bugs, uh, so I'm not a hardcore coder. I have documented the APIs on nosqlproject.com. Uh, the code is available to, for download over there. So uh, what are the key features for tool uh, for the tool? Uh, you have, um, uh, as it has support for now, Mongo Couch, Redis, uh, HBase, and Cassandra. Uh, it has support for uh, NoSQL run web applications. You could specify the web app URL and specify the web app uh, command for checking. Uh, it tests for, Java, tests for JavaScript attacks, uh, MongoDB dollar attacks, uh, Couch PHP driver attacks, etc. It has a multi-thread uh, IP list scanner. I've also put, put in there. Uh, you could specify a huge list of IP and check for whether the ports are open or not and whether the attacks are possible or not. Uh, and the list continues. You have database cloning feature. You have dictionary attacks. Uh, you could, like I said, the post exploitation module will be integrated soon. You could add JavaScript attacks into it uh, for the Mongo. Uh, it uh, showed an IP list grabber. It grabs the uh, uh, li uh, it takes the list from Shoda and gives it to you. You could sniff for uh, database credentials and cookies. Uh, so the sniffing model automatically grabs the needed. Uh, corresponding cookies for Couch, uh, Mongo, and Redis. Uh, I have added a payload list also for this. So uh, future updates on the tool, uh, you could get updates for uh, Cassandra and HBS attacks, resource exhaustion, uh, support for React Memcache and, and Neo4j, uh, pen test report generation, and of course, most